Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, beloved people of God. Welcome you to second day of December, the devotional of our Daily Fountain of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. We pray that the good Lord will bless us as we meditate on his word this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, thank you for today. As we meditate on your word, may your Holy Spirit teach us. May your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, that the entrance of your word will give us life, and life in abundance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our Bible reading is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 1 reading from verse 1 to 7. Micah 1, 1 to 7. The word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morishet, during the reigns of Jotan, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. The vision he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, you people, all of you, listening, it, and all who live in it, that the sovereign Lord may bear witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Look, the Lord is coming from his dwelling place. He comes down and treads on the heights of the earth. The mountains met beneath him, and the valleys split apart, like wax before the fire, like water rushing down a slope. All this is because of Jacob's transgression because of the sins of the people of Israel. What is Jacob's transgression? Is it not Samaria? What is Judah's high place? Is it not Jerusalem? Therefore, I will make Samaria a heap of rubble, a place for planting vineyard. I will pour her stones into the valley and lay bare her foundations. All her idols will be broken to pieces. All her temple gifts will be burnt with fire. I will destroy all her images since she gathered her gift from the wages of prostitutes. As the wages of prostitutes, they will again be used. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, beloved people of God, we are looking at the theme, God still hates idol. God still hates idol. Our text is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7. In our text, God was warning his people and nation, the people of Israel, through the prophet of God, Micah, of the impending doom that awaits them, all will befall them as a result of their worship of idols. God was warning the people of Israel. The people of Israel, as they stayed in Egypt, they learned from the Egyptians, who were idol worshippers, how they worshipped idols, and they tried to imbibe that in their lives. That was why even after God had delivered them from Egypt, 
through to the land of Canaan, you still saw that they were meeting with some neighboring nations and they were imbibing that habit of the people worship of idol into themselves. For example, from this passage, Samaria was a neighboring nation to Israel. Samaria were idol worshippers. And Israel now had to be copying their act of worshipping idol. That was why God sent his prophet, Prophet Micah, to tell them of the impending judgment that would befall them if they continue the serving of idol. The team, God still hates idol, expresses God's continuous strong emotional dislike towards the object idol. God does not like idol. God dislikes the worship of idol. And God made it clear to his children that none must worship idol. It is important we understand the following terms in this theme. We are going to look at the word idol and we are going to look at the word hatred. Now, what is an idol? It is an image or a representation of a god used as an object of worship. The representation of a god, an image used as a, rep a representation of God as an object of worship. Idolatry is the worship of an image as though it were God. When you place an image in the, in the place of God, there it is the worship of idol. It is idolatry. It is anything you look at and say in your heart, if I've had this thing, if this thing were to be my own, is an idol. For example, you see a fine house. I am not saying you should not admire what is good, but no sooner you put your eyes on it and you are having the thought, oh, if I were the owner, if I were the owner of this house now, you are seeing that house as an idol. Or you see somebody gorgeously dressed in your heart, you are now saying, ah, if I were the one who is addressed as this man, who is addressed as this woman, you continue to admire the dressing, you are seeing it as an idol. What is hatred? It, it is a relatively sta stable feeling of intense dislike. Hatred is dislike. Dislike for a thing. Dislike for an entity. Dislike for an individual. Dislike for a group. That is hatred. Dislike for something. Therefore, our topic, God still hates idol, is a present continuous action of our God. That our God hates idol right from his big inception. Hate idol worship. Hate it 100 years ago. Our God hates it today. And our God hates it forever. So forever and ever and ever, our God hates idol. In Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8, it says, God never changes. He remains the same from generation to generation. So that God that hated idols in the days of the Israelites, while they were leaving the land of Egypt for the land of promise, still hate idols today and hate idols forever. So God does not want anyone that serve idols. God wants us to serve him. Serve him alone and not to serve idol. In Exodus chapter 20, from verse 3, our God made it clear in the Ten Commandments that he gave to the people of Israel. He said, Thou shalt have no other God except me. Thou shalt not worship any other God apart from me. That was the instruction God gave in the Ten Commandments that he gave to the Israelites and he gave to us believers that he should be the only God, the only one that we should serve. God vividly instructed his people, the people of Israel, and we today, that 
we must make sure we don't worship idols. Why did God say we should not worship idols? Because God is a jealous God. God will not share his glory with any man. God will not allow any other thing to take his place. That is why God is saying we should not serve idols. And there is the consequence of worshipping idols. And this consequence of worshipping idols is very grievous. What happened? It transcends from the third to the fourth generation. That is what the scripture says. If a man worships idol, God will pass it to the third and fourth generation. The consequence of that worship of idol. So we must refrain from the worship of idol. Why do God hate idol? Why do God hate idol? In Jonah chapter 2 verse 8, idol worship causes men to turn away from God's love. When men worship idol, they turn away from the love of Christ. The love of Christ is far from them. You find out that the children of Israel, God's chosen people, anytime they backslided, anytime they worship idol, anytime they fell from the favor of God, the love of God left them. God's love left them. Idol worship attracts God's wrath. That is another reason why God says we must not worship idol. Idol worship attracts God's wrath. Let's look at when the children of Moses went to collect the Ten Commandments. We are told that the Israelites pressurized Aaron that he should make for them the golden calf. And Aaron made for them the golden calf. And when Moses came, Moses was angry. God was angry because the Israelites decided to make for them a golden calf. And the Israelites said, yes, this is the God that delivered us from Egypt. They were saying that the calf was the God that delivered them from Egypt. And the wrath of God fell on them. Don't forget that generation. It was only Joshua and Caleb that entered into the land of promise. The wrath of God fell on all others. Why? Because of the worship of idol. Idols, number three, neither help or save his worshiper. Idols don't save. Idols cannot help the worshippers. In Psalm 115, verses 4 through 8, the Bible describes idols as dumb idols. They have leg, they cannot move. They have mouth, they cannot speak. They have eyes, they cannot see. They have hands, they cannot feel. And the word of God concluded that he that worships them is like them. So the word of God hates the worship of idol. If a man worships idol, that man is said to be also. You can be called an idol if you worship idol because the glory of God will depart from you. Because idol, they are dumb idols. They don't have power. It's only, power is only in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, idol can also include a person's own selfishness. Idols, the worship of idol can include a person's own selfishness. This can also be considered as an idol. Your selfishness. For example, there are some people, they are so interested in their family. They take their family more than God. They take their family as their priority, more than the things of God. They see their family as their idol. Ah, my children, I must send them abroad. My children, it's not bad to send children abroad. It's good. But they'll say, I'll send my children abroad. Anything they are doing in the church, they will not partake out of it. They will not be part of it. They will not even contribute anything in the church. To them, their family is the utmost. Some people see their weight as an idol. They see their weight as their all in all. In the place of God, I have gotten everything. So what do I need? Don't forget the story of that rich fool who said I will increase my band because I have gotten everything. But God said, you fool, tonight I will take away your life from you. So your weight should not take the place of God. Your weight should not be an idol in your life. Your weight must be used to glorify the name of the Lord. Weight is good. We need worthy people in the church of God to advance the kingdom of God. But our weight should not be taken as an idol. Some people take their career. I will not play with my job 
My job is very important. That is a selfishness. Selfishness. My job, my job, everything my job, at the detriment of your Christian life. You will not look at your Christian life and you will not pay attention to your Christian life. Yours is, oh, my job, my job. Some people take their success as an idol. Some take security as an idol. Ah, I need security. God is the one that secures. They so much engage themselves in security. We need police. We need this around us. Just call upon the name of the Lord. The Lord is the author and finisher of our faith and is the author and the powerful God that can save us from every situation. Now let us consider some nations, some examples of some nations that abandoned God and followed the worship of idols. Let's consider some nations. One, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 20 to 21. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 24, we can see the st story of Sodom and Gomorrah. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were involved in immorality and they were involved in the service of idols. Highly involved in immorality. Sodom was taking place. So serving of idol was taking place there. They neglected God at the expense of the idol they were worshipping. And what happened to them? The wrath of God fell on them. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Destroyed because of their art of immorality and the worship of idol. In the book of Numbers, chapter 25, verse 1 to 5, it tells us the story of some leaders of Israel who went to marry the Moabite women. These Moabite women had their idol. They took them as wives. Some took them as concubines. They brought these Moabite women to their homes. And these Moabite women now lured them into the worship of those idols. These Moabite women would prepare food for their idol and give to this Israelite leader to eat. And what happened? God instructed Moses that these Israelite leaders should be killed in broad daylight because of their worship of idol. They were killed in broad daylight. This was done in order to avert God's anger on the people of Israel. Point number three. What of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36? Between Elijah and the prophets of Baas. Elijah told the people of Israel, choose within two opinions whom thou will serve. Is it God Almighty that delivers us or the God of the Baas? And Elijah practicalized this. And what did prophet Elijah do? He told the prophet of the Ba and told the people of Israel that the God that answered by fire shall be the God that Israel will serve. So they made an altar. This altar that was made, the prophet of Baas put their sacrifice on it, cried to their God, cried to their God, started cutting themselves. Bloods were coming out. Prophet Elijah was telling them, maybe your God is asleep. Maybe your God is troubled. Continue to call upon your God. They did, did severally. There was no way. And Prophet Elijah, now to the afternoon, now to the all right, let's dismantle their altar. Prophet Elijah dismantled the altar of the prophet of Baas and made the altar of God and placed 12 stones which represented the 12 tribes of Israel there on that altar. And he told them to dig a trench around. They poured water, once poured, second poured the third time. And prophet Elijah called upon the name of the Lord. And as he called upon the name of the Lord, the God most high, he answered prayers. And fire came and consumed the sacrifice. Prophet Elijah instructed that all the prophet of Baas, the 150 of them, should be heard. They should be apprehended. No one should escape. And the 150 of them, 150 of those prophets of Baas, died, were killed immediately by Elijah and the people of Israel. And that was what ended the reign of Ahab and Jezebel. Beloved people of God, God never toys with anything that will share his glory. That is why he says, I am the Lord. I will never, never share my glory with anyone. God is not ready, and God will not share his glory with anyone. God is not ready. 
God will not share his glory with any idol. In the book of Isaiah chapter 48 verse 11, he says, I am God. I will never share my glory with anybody. Conclusively, beloved people of God, God never toys with anything that will share his glory. Never toys with anything that will share his glory. I want to enjoin us, beloved people of God, to accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. Serve Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. There are fake prophets everywhere. They bring idols to the church. Those are not the way we should emulate. We should emulate the way of Christ. The way of Christ is the way of deliverance. The way of Christ is the way of salvation. And the greatest miracle that a man can have is the miracle of Jesus' salvation. May God give us grace to serve him in spirit and in truth so that every kind of idols in our lives, the Lord will destroy it in Jesus' name. Father, we are grateful for your word we have learned. Is there anything that's an idol in our lives? Father, by this message that has come forth to the people this morning, may it destroy that power in Jesus' name. May we put our confidence, may we put our authority on Christ and Christ alone and no other power. Thank you, Father, because you are God and forever you remain our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.